love friends and enemies. Um, I read a lot of books already in October. Boy, did I just almost call it September. I sure did. So, um, I'm gonna backload all the manga I read to the end of the video. That way if you wanna just click off, you can. So yeah, according to my stats, I read 27 books in October for a total of 6,344 pages, which for reference, my biggest month this year so far was 31 books in July. And I read almost 10,000 pages. It was 9,882 pages that month. Yeah. So um, I went a little, little uh, obsessive for me. I definitely am having a fixation moment, uh, which is something I do get with my ADHD where I get hyper into something. And that something is manga right now. But I still read a bunch of other really great books. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run through those books, tell you a little bit about them, give you a rating, and then we'll just keep going. So first up, we have the Tangled Web series by Letha Romick. I'm gonna group these three together. We have Twisted, which is book one in this series, Obsessed, which is book two in the series, and Bound, which is book three in the series. I read all of these over like three days. These are such digestible romantic suspense thrillers. Uh, I gave all of them anywhere from, basically all of them four stars. I think that it did a really great job running through their lives. Um, this, this follows Laurel, who is a doctor working in a lab developing this much needed, desired thing. And she meets Cade. And basically, he's sent to kill her, but he decides not to. There's some danger banging. There's a lot of suspense and mystery. Some hidden identity stuff happening. And I think overall, it was just a really, really good story. Uh, it, I don't know if it's my favorite in the Sparrow's outfit, but I really, really liked it. I thought it was really rewarding. There is a discussion. Um, there's murder on the page. Like, this is romantic suspense, y'all. This has it all as far as trigger warnings, as far as like death, threats, danger, etc. So proceed with caution. Also, Cade has dissociative identity disorder, and I really cannot speak to that rep in any capacity. So I just want you to know about it ahead of time in case that's something you don't want to read about, and I don't know how it was handled because I don't know enough to make that call. Um, yeah, so there's that. I listened to all of these on Audible Escape. So you definitely still have time if you want to dive in. A lot of that series is on Audible Escape and definitely worth your time. Next, I listened to two Alyssa Cole novellas. It was the last two that I hadn't listened to yet. So I listened to Be Not Afraid by Alyssa Cole. This is a solid four-star novella. I think it needed like 10 more pages to develop, to be honest. So that's why it's a four-star instead of a five. I still really enjoyed this. This is set during the American Revolution. And I think it does a really good job. I think it was really great. Tr content warning or trigger warning for death of a child, not on page, but talked about on page. Um, and obviously like racism and other terrible things are in this book. It is set during the American Revolution, it's pre-Civil War, so you know it's not great. It was still a really good book and I really liked it. Then I read Let Us Dream by Alyssa Cole, which is a five-star novella. This is set in Harlem in like 1919, I believe. And I loved this book. I thought that the setting was immaculate. I just really felt that sense of time and place when I read this. And I really enjoyed watching the, these two fall in love and how their love story worked. Uh, so this follows Bertha and Amir. They're kind of clashing a little bit in the best way, like bantery goodness. And they just kind of find their way to be together. And it's super cute and sweet. And I really, really loved this one. I'm so glad I listened to it before it possibly vanishes. Next up, I read Spoiler Alert by Olivia Dade, and this, this book. Y'all, where is it? I have it. I can show you it. For once in my life, I actually have a physical copy. So I pre-ordered it because I knew I wanted it because of the cover. So this is Spoiler Alert by Olivia Dade. This is a five star, maybe a four and a half star read for me overall, but I think that this book, had a lot of things I don't normally like, like celebrities and kind of hidden identities, but in a way that was like, yikes. 
uh, because this follows Marcus, who is an actor on a really big show, kind of like Game of Thrones-esque, and April, who is a big fandom writer and cosplayer in that community. She gets trolled online when she posts a full body photo, like face and everything, about being fat, and he asks her on a date. Turns out they've been talking for years on a Discord server about their fanfiction. Marcus finds out really quickly who April is, and that is a slight issue to an extent in the story because you're kind of just like clenched waiting for the reveal but I still think it was really well done and well handled. This book also has a lot of real world situation happening about being fat and yes tons of books are out there that talk about fat characters falling in love or like a fat character falling in love and it's fine but I personally really enjoy when there is a mix of the real world because there is no one who is fat that gets to live in the world and not experience some form of weird shit around diet culture and body shaming. Even as a smaller fat, I hear it all the time and it drives me fucking bonkers and I just don't like it. So I liked that her mom, because I do often feel like it's family who does this to you and I do did like her mom being involved in the somewhat fat shaming that she does to April. Um, it's painful. It's not great, but I do think it felt okay in the story overall. And I really, really just liked that dose of realism to it because sure we had the online trolls, but like it's easier to ignore the online trolls you don't know. It's harder to process when it's family being shitty to you. And I just, I love spoiler alert y'all. This is like a new fave. Cannot wait for the next book in this series. I just really, really liked it. I loved the dose of fandom and fan fiction mixed in. I've talked about it before. I'm like a former fandom fanfiction kid. Um, Sailor Moon in particular was my fandom of choice to read. And then I did, I think I read a good bit of Twilight fanfic too back in the day. Um, but you know, I just, I loved it. I can't recommend it enough if you're prepared for some of that dose of the real world fat shaming that happens in this. If you're not, that's totally okay. It may not be for you but I loved this book. Next, I read Shadows of Stormcliff Hall. This is a gothic romance. Um, the twist at the end was fine. I kind of expected it, wasn't surprised by it. I gave this like a three and a half. This was on Audible Escape. It was supposed to be a series. It looked like it didn't get picked up to be more, which kind of sucks. But this follows Jane and Bastion. Jane has traveled to Ireland. I think it was Ireland. I may have the location wrong. Anyway, she travels there to go do research on this family home and Bastion is like not having it. And then there's some ghost possession and fingering in the beginning, which is pretty hilarious. And it was fun. I think it was a fun little romp. Um, I just, it was okay. Like, I don't know. I think I wanted a little bit more from it than what I was getting, which is okay. Um, it happens. I definitely want I really want more gothic romances to read right now and there's just not a ton out there I feel like that are newer so if you have any recs let me know please and thank you this is also an audible escape title if you want to check it out before that's gone next I read solutions and other problems by Ali Brosh five stars I loved it um I'm not surprised I loved it it just kind of hit me in a really great spot because Sometimes you just need Ali Brosh in your life and that's how I felt when I read this book. I was just so happy to have her back in my life. I love how she talks about mental health and illness and life in general because I do think it is just well done. Um, very connectable, like relate connectable, very relatable overall. If you liked Hyperbole and a Half, you're gonna like Solutions and Other Problems. Then I listened to Let Me Love You by Alexandria House, which is my first Alexandria House and oh my gosh. I'm so glad I'm reading her now. This one follows Joe and Everett. Joe and Everett. Um, they Everett is a big rapper called Big South, and Joe is the ex of a rival rapper, kind of. She's got a kid, so warning on that if you don't like kids in romance. I do think it worked out okay because the kid was old, was like little and kind of not ignored but it was she was dealt with in the right way I guess if that makes sense like she was around just the right amount dealt with in the right way like put in a corner no like she was around the right amount I really enjoyed this I gave it a four star because I felt like it dragged on just a little too long I wanted I wanted the story to wrap up sooner than it did because there kept being like other 
big moments and I felt like the big moments were done as those kept happening, if that makes sense. Uh, like it was almost like there were too many villains or too many people trying to keep them apart at the end of the day. Trigger warning slash content warning, there is a slur, it is a version of the R word, I don't love that. Um, they also, the, the author is black, just so you know, and they do use the N word in this book. I know some people don't like that. So I just want to put it out there now so you know before you dive in. I don't, I have no, obviously, I have no opinions on these things. Um, then I read Gentle Rogue by Joanna Lindsay. So I read my first Joanna Lindsay ever. I gave it a three star, maybe three and a half. I felt like this one really showed you 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 got to see the origin of a lot of romance tropes in this and like the evolution from where it kind of started in the 90s to now. This one is a pirate romance. This is about Georgina who disguises herself as a cabin boy to get back to America after going to England to find her betrothed, 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 words. Anyway, she was engaged to this dude. He never came back. She's like, what the fuck? She shows up. It's like three chapters getting there. Intro is way too long. Like nowadays you would cut that off and jump right in, right? And she ends up on James Mallory's ship and he knows who she is, that she's not what she claims to be and kind of is terrorizing her a little bit. Um, I really liked how strong Georgina was and her, her like strength of character. I also quite liked James Mallory overall. I think this wasn't bad. I don't know that I, there's a lot of, there are, okay, look, there are like two old romances I've rated like five stars or four stars. It's like Lord of Scoundrels, I loved, and Dreaming of You by Lisa Kleypas. Those are like it so far. I, and I read, I do read older romances with the eye of I'm reading history of romance, if not that I'm reading modern day. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. So this was like a three, three and a half. I enjoyed it overall. I'm slightly curious enough to dive back in and read some more in this series though. Next, I listened to Scrooged by Penelope Ward and Vi Keeland. This is again an audible escape. This is like an hour, two and a half hour book. Uh, I dove into this because I just thought I wanted something different, okay? Like honestly, I just wanted something different. So I, hmm. Mm, what do I think of this book? So I didn't love it, honestly. I thought that these were pretty boring short stories. I love a holiday short story usually, and I just was like, okay, I think I liked two of the three of them for the most part, but like it was a three star read. I don't think any of them really stood out to me on the whole, so that's part of it. Um, honestly, like part of it's just that none of them really stood out. I think if you want to listen to something Christmassy, it's a good option. You'll get through it quickly. Next, I read Smashing the Pumpkin King by Holly Ween. Yep, yeah, you read that right. You Or you heard that right. And yes, you're looking at the cover. This is going to be in the vlog coming out next Thursday. Uh, I hope you guys are excited. I pivoted on my blog, vlog? I pivoted on my vlog plans this month because, um, well, you'll see on the vlog on why. There's, there's a lot going on. Anyways, I rated this a two and a half, three star read. I don't know the last time I highlighted a book this much and laughed. I laughed more at this than I did at Kissing the Coronavirus. It was hilarious. Our main character, Amelia, brings home a pumpkin that speaks to her and it manifests as this hot man that is orange colored. And we go from there. I have a lot of highlights up on in, on uh, Goodreads for this and I also have a thread on Twitter if you want to go read it but also I will be talking about it in depth in that vlog so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give you too much here on this one but I do recommend you check out this vlog I think it's gonna be more fun than when I read Skeleton King then I listened to two more books in the Mystic Bayou series which is by Molly Harper so I listened to Love and Other Words which I gave four stars okay so this one so Love and Other Wild Things is Zed and Danny I really liked this. Danny has come to town as an energy witch, so that was fun to have a witch character. And Zed's like a bear shifter, so that's also fun, honestly. And I just, it was a fun time. These are, I really like the Mystic Bayou series overall in Audible Escape. I think they're a great option if you just want some quick hits of paranormal and like kind of a whole town setting, which I do enjoy. And yeah, it was a fun time. I really liked it. 
And then I listened to Even Trinum's Get the Blues, which I gave three stars to. It just, it was almost too short to give me more. It was just kind of a quick hit of like, here's someone else falling in love in the town with a tree nymph and that was fun but i would have liked more plot so maybe she comes in in the next book which i will be starting soon yeah i'll be starting the next book soon so maybe she comes in during that more but yeah it was fine like it was just fine all right now for the manga hold on all right let's talk about all the manga i read so here is volumes 3 through 11 of yona and the dawn I also read volumes one and two, but I already returned those to the library. I was trying to be a responsible library user. So um, volume one, I really enjoyed. I gave this five stars. I was sold on the story very quickly. Volume two, same thing. Um, volume three, again, another five star. Really, really liked it. Volume four was also five stars. Volume five was five stars. Six was five stars. Seven, eight was four stars. It just didn't have enough Yona for me. Uh, and then nine... 10 and 11 were also five star reads uh so yeah i really dove deep into yona of the dawn which this is a manga series that is still ongoing i think um the next book comes out in december i read so that's not too bad i'm about to order all of the volumes after 11 <laughs> for myself because I need to continue reading. Uh, the reason I'm really loving Yona of the Dawn is this is a fantasy romance, I think. I mean, it's a so, so it's a sojo beat title, which does mean it usually has romance. But Yona is on the run because her father was murdered, and her evil cousin, kind of evil, she doesn't know he's evil, kind of cousin, is taking over the throne. And they, so she's on the run with Hawk, who is her guard or was her guard slash also childhood friend and she has to go find the four dragons so she's on a quest to find the four dragons and then we're just kind of going from there it's a great adventure fantasy novel i or manga novel manga and i'm really really liking it i don't know the last time i was this sucked into a manga series to be honest with you and i think that if you have an interest in it I know it's big and I know it's ongoing. If you can get it from your library, I can't recommend it enough. I mean, that's obviously how I read 11 volumes in the last 15 days. And I did that because I knew I could, um, I could get them from the library. So I was like, well, if I don't love them, it's okay. I don't have to buy them. But now I'm at the point where my library no longer has the volumes I need. <sighs> Uh, sad panda it's fine it's fine because I'm gonna buy them I want to own I want to own the series anyways so it works out so yeah that's Yona of the Dawn the other mangas I read is I read two volumes of the promised Neverland and I have a bunch more downstairs to finish I just got really sidetracked with Yona because it was really speaking to me the promised Neverland is about a bunch of kids at an orphanage and things are not as they seem when those kids leave that's all I'm gonna tell you about it I've given both volumes five stars as well I am really enjoying them. I'm really enjoying my dive back into manga. So I've talked about it some. I used to read manga when I was in high school a lot more. I used to watch a lot more anime then too. And even like, I don't know, early 20s I was doing a lot more. I just kind of fell off because it's so expensive and we didn't have the resources we have now to get them as easily. So what I've been doing now is I've actually I talked to Shay and got, made sure I got the right sites to order from. And yeah, I'm ordering a whole batch of those. I've ordered some other mangas to try. I mean, I have manga on my shelf. I just have not been prioritizing it in any capacity. And I'm, I'm excited to do so because honestly, I love manga. It's so fun. It's such a quick hit. And it's helping me defeat my mom in our reading goal battle, which is why, uh, which is why I am reading manga again, partially. Also, I literally am hyper fixated on Yona of the Dawn to an extent right now, and it's, it'll be fine. I'll, I'll get through it. It's just a weird thing I do sometimes, and that's okay. Um, as far as my mom and my reading competition goes, I just want to give you a quick update. As of today, when I'm filming this on the 15th, I am at 243 books. And my mom is at 252. So she's ticking ahead of me a little bit here, but I still have a couple volumes of manga to read. And that vlog on Thursday should be the catalyst to catch me up and past her. So we'll see. All right, 
I will talk to y'all later. This is super not a normal reading month for me. Also, just to reiterate, I don't know if I said it in the beginning, any and all reading is good reading. Do not compare your reading to my reading. My reading is a little bonkers, let's be honest. We know that that is a known thing with anyone who watches my channel, and I just don't want anyone to feel downtrodden or like they don't read enough because I read so many books already this month. My end of month wrap up is gonna be wild. So, on that note, be sure to subscribe if you want more, what is my hair doing? Okay. Be sure to subscribe if you want more romance content. You can also find links in the description box to all of my things, including Goodreads, Instagram, and Twitter. If you want to come chat with me anywhere else, go ahead and check those out. There's also a link to a Discord, which is for both creators and viewers of Romance Tube. So if you like romance books, come join us and chat. I know we're talking about the Bridgerton series happening. Um, all kinds of other stuff's popping off in there, book racks, etc. Uh, it's a great place to come hang out and chat with other readers and creators. So be sure to check that out and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I will see y'all in a few days with my next video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Bye.